To survive, most wild fauna need vast spaces, extended territories, and harmoniously preserved habitats. Man's relentless encroachment on the land has fragmented these territories and broken the natural passages that species use to move around. These natural corridors are essential to the survival and equilibrium of ecosystems. All over the world, scientists, protectors of the environment, and the inhabitants of these lands are coming together to restore these corridors and with them, the free circulation of wild animals. The ultimate challenge, cohabitation with the wild. The Carpathians, the wild heart of Europe. This mountain range, stretching across several countries, is home to two-thirds of Europe's population of bears, lynx, and wolves. Among these great carnivores are the bears, who inhabit these vast territories and move around regularly in search of shelter, food, and mates. In Romania, a single ancestral passage allows them to travel between the north and the south of the Carpathians to reproduce and perpetuate their species. The Zarin Corridor. But this ecological corridor is undergoing economic development. Agriculture, breeding, and infrastructure are encroaching on the fauna's territory, and there is conflict with man. A number of organizations and scientists are fighting to preserve the integrity of the corridor while still ensuring the survival of local populations. One of these is Ranger Radu Popa from the environmental NGO Fauna and Flora International, an organization that is heavily involved in preserving the Zorand Corridor. The interesting thing about this corridor is the interaction between its inhabitants and the shepherds. All those who go about their business in conjunction with the environment and the animals. It's a model for us. That's how we contribute to conservation and the durability of the natural and cultural environment of this ecological corridor. Situated in Transylvania in the Romanian Carpathians, the Zorand Corridor links the Apuseni Natural Park in the north to the Retezats National Park in the south, encompassing 17 protected natural zones. The importance of this 150-kilometer ecological corridor goes much further than the preservation of these mountain ranges. The great carnivores, who move regularly from one natural park to another, always use the Zoran Corridor, passing through several villages. Nevertheless, it is crucial that the landscape remains consistent along the whole corridor to aid their movement. The Mures River, at the heart of the country, slices the corridor in two. In this valley, biologist Radu Mott and his team, along with Radu Popa, reconnoiter the river. Human pressure is powerful here. And this is a crucial factor to work on, to preserve the free movement of bears and other wild species. Look, this is a detailed map of the area. The corridor seems to be continuous, but in fact it is fragmented by linear elements, such as transport infrastructures and the Mures River. Some of the steep banks in these areas can cause connectivity issues. Radu and his team want to see whether animals, including bears, use this stretch of the river. Reaching the banks by boat, they search for any traces that would indicate the passage of animals.
We're going to try to paddle up the calmest stretch of the river up above the island. If we come across any muddy trails or a beach, we'll stop there to look for traces. We're mainly interested in bears, and particularly in an isolated population living in the Apuseni Mountains. It is vital for the species to maintain this natural link with the main population in the southern Carpathians. This is an important section of the Mures River because it allows us to monitor the passages from south to north and vice versa. The river forms a corridor between the wooded areas. I've often noticed that the animals that want to cross use this shallow section to reach an island or a more accessible beach. Genetic research and studies of the terrain, which have taken place since the start of the Conservator program in 2010, have provided an understanding of the dynamics of the great carnivore populations, their distribution and their movement through the heart of the corridor. At the top of the food chain, bears have no natural predator. It is an umbrella species because of its crucial role in protecting the animal and vegetable balance of the ecosystem. In these riverside forests, herbivores can find peace and an abundance of food. Road ear tracks. You're right. A wildcat. No. We don't pick my colo. All of these wooded islands, with their natural vegetation, act as a haven for some species. Bats use these corridors to migrate and hunt. There are wild boars, roe deer, and other deer who spend the whole day on the island. At a time when conservation is changing and aims to link sanctuaries of biodiversity to encourage the free circulation of wild fauna, the preservation of biological corridors such as Zorand, one of the largest in the Carpathians, is crucial. This two-year-old juvenile brown bear takes the road south towards the Redizat Mountains. In the forest, it follows markers, natural pathways created by hundreds of thousands of bears. It has probably left its mother's side in the Apuseni Mountains in the north of the corridor to seek its own territory. It is one of 7,200 brown bears living in the Romanian Carpathians, the highest density in Europe outside Russia. Thanks to a hunting ban in 2006, when there were only 6,000 bears, the numbers have grown year on year. Before it finds its new territory, a bear can roam for hundreds of kilometers, far from its birthplace, to avoid inbreeding and ensure it will have abundant food in all seasons. A few months ago, it could rely on its mother's help. Now, it has to find its own food. Fear and lack of experience could drive it to eat more frequently. Bears are omnivores. Their diet is mostly vegetarian. Grass, fruits, all kinds of seeds. But they are happy to hunt or eat carrion if they find it. They have even been known to attack domestic animals. On the bear's natural passages, herds of domestic animals in the mountain pastures are most at risk from attacks by large predators. Even though their presence has always been part of everyday life for farmers, 
there are still losses. It was the middle of the night. I was sleeping. I got up to get a drink of water. I, when I looked up, I saw the bear heading toward the sheep. It pounced on one of them and bit its back. The bear's more frequent interaction with humans is also due to the fragmentation of its habitat. Around 100 incidents have been cataloged in the last three years, creating a climate of fear and insecurity in some villages. You never used to see wild animals near the houses. Just rabbits. That's why I never go into the forest alone. If I go there, I always go with a neighbor or someone else. I never, ever go alone. Any talk of coexistence is optimistic. In reality, we share a territory with the bears. We use a lot of the same resources. We have to learn to live with them. In rural and forest areas, albeit at the heart of an ecological corridor essential to the movement of brown bears, Villagers who are worried about their herds being attacked sometimes indulge in poaching. Mostly, they set simple snares. But these can be lethal for bears and other creatures. In recent years, a team from the local police force has been set up to combat illegal hunting. This region is the second largest forested area in the country. So we have a brigade specializing in patrolling operations. Now preventing and fighting against poaching is our main mission. It's an essential aspect of fauna and flora protection on a national level. What's going on? Seems to be a problem in this area. Yeah, we'll have three teams. Team one will go to the little valley, team two to the big valley, and team three can take the quad bike and go to the river, which is less accessible. Since the brigade was formed, 380 crimes against biodiversity have led to sanctions. Penalties are heavy. Killing a protected species, such as a bear, is punishable by a jail sentence. But this does little to dissuade those responsible, as it is hard to catch them in the act. The brigade is watchful and aware that they may cross the path of a bear startled by their presence. After a few kilometers, they find a trap. Thanks to the surveillance in place, a bear caught in the trap can still be saved. It's important to mention that we have formed a specialized rapid response team that has been going for two years. It is made up of police officers and project managers, along with a vet. They sedate the bear so that they can free it. Then the animal will be treated and released in the designated zone.
for these simple farmers, losing beasts from their herd is never trivial. Getting compensation is too long-winded and difficult. The corridor's inhabitants, as everywhere else in the Carpathians, are waiting for concrete solutions from the Romanian government so that they can live in harmony with large carnivores. I have always been a shepherd. I love my sheep, my sheep fold, and I take care of them. And I always will. It's wonderful. When you look at the landscape around you, forests, the pastures, you can't help falling in love with the place. You always have to be wary of wild animals, wolves and bears. I'm not going to lie. I've lost animals. Not many, but it has happened. Ranger Radu Popa knows that to stamp out poaching without fueling local anger, it is essential to support farmers like the Galozi family by providing them with concrete and prompt solutions. The integrity of the corridor can only be preserved with the help of the inhabitants of Zorand to promote cohabitation with large carnivores. The Life Connect Carpathians project has instilled measures to facilitate the coexistence of man with large carnivores. Romanian Carpathian shepherd dogs have been given to shepherds to facilitate traditional cohabitation between humans, bears, lynx, and wolves. Initially, we gave them all a male and a female, and over time, they reproduced and formed packs. These highly instinctive herd protection dogs are powerful and resistant to disease and cold. They are an integral part of the herd that they protect ferociously as they would their own family. Come here, we've brought you some food. Cornell, do you remember the first time you saw these dogs? I couldn't believe it. Good thing Claudio agreed. If it had been up to you, I wasn't interested. It's true. Why didn't you want them? I already had big dogs, my Mirotics. You see, shepherds get big dogs thinking they're better. But as soon as my father tried the Romanian Carpathian sheep dogs, he was convinced. That's right. And are you convinced they are good dogs now? Huh? Yes. I've had these two for four or five five years. Never had any problems. <laughs> we got them to reproduce, and that's exactly what we needed. We now have five, which is more than enough. Gonel, do you remember when the bear came and Marin called you? Yeah, of course I do. He saw it at 3.30 in the afternoon. The dogs were chasing the bear over the hill. That's when Marin was convinced. Did he see it? Yeah, he saw it run away. He didn't believe it until he saw it with his own eyes. The dog smelt it from a mile off and chased it away. It ran away into the forest. They're great dogs. Bears aren't usually scared of dogs, but they are of these. What is so effective about these dogs is their defensive and protective instinct. That makes them different to other dogs. 
They have an extremely keen sense of smell. They can smell predators from a very long way off. That means they can detect them from far away and early enough to keep them away and stop them getting into the pasture. A good dog isn't one who saves a sheep attacked by a wolf or a bear because the damage has been done. The injured beast could die. The dog is at its best when the predator is kept at a distance and can't attack, injure, or kill the sheep. Radu Popa's team have given over 50 dogs to the most vulnerable farmers. It's an alliance that keeps predators at bay and helps to contend with their presence in the corridor. Having roamed over a dozen kilometers during the night, this exhausted bear has collapsed into this dry litter that protects it from humidity. The male, around 20 years old, is very familiar with the Zorand corridor. This is probably the first time it has used the passage this year, but it will do so again between now and its hibernation period in November. Its 150 square kilometer territory encompasses the ecological corridor. The passage allows it to move around while still remaining concealed in the forest. The bears in these vast spaces coexist with the exclusively carnivorous lynx and wolves and regulate the populations of herbivores. If they were too numerous, they would devour the vegetation and deprive the other creatures that depend on it. The brown bear disperses the seeds of the fruit it eats through its droppings, making its own contribution to the forest's renewal. It is May, and this male, like others, is moving through the corridor in search of a female and to perpetuate its species by ensuring genetic blending. Thanks to its experience, it can cover the expanse of the corridor in six days, half the time it would take a juvenile bear. But in recent years, new obstacles have appeared on its path. The large carnivore's corridor is colliding with that of humans in this region, which is undergoing economic development. The A1 motorway, the first express route to link the Romanian capital Bucharest to the rest of Europe via Hungary, cuts straight through the middle of the Zorand corridor. In addition to this barrier, which opened in 2019, is a second, a high-speed train line which is being built close to the motorway and the Murus River. For several years, the NGO and the construction company have tried to reach a compromise so that these rail and road infrastructures do not bar the way for large carnivores. The first time I contacted the authorities responsible for the Lugoj Deva motorway project was in 2010. I told them that they would have to take into account the breaching of the corridor, which is important all along the European Carpathians' range. We managed to bring in foreign experts who provided both good and bad examples of similar cases in their countries. Then, working with the authorities, the road company and the Environmental Protection Agency, we agreed on adjustments to their original plan and implemented protection measures. 
These measures consisted of building viaducts, tunnels and green bridges, which are now seen as examples of good practice, not only for Romania, but other European countries too. Radu Mott and his team have won the first battle. On some sections of the motorway, the construction of eco-ducts has been agreed to allow animals to cross the motorway. A first for Romania. The inside of the bridge has two strips of sand running along it. These allow scientists to collect prints to evaluate the animal's use of these green bridges. Droppings are another clue to their movement across these eco-ducts. Team member Razvan is setting up two camera traps to complete the monitoring system, hoping to catch on film the passage of an animal heading for the Apuseni or Retezet mountains. These eco-ducts are much more than just a passage between two wildlife zones. They are genuine symbols, the first state-level sign of an acceptance of large fauna on human territory. But it is not just human infrastructures that prevent the bears' free movement. The landscape itself can stop them if it is not continuous. Fauna and Flora International Biologist Jan Truby is going to a particularly sensitive section of the corridor in the Mures Valley, where the wooded areas are fragmented. One of the biggest challenges we have in this area is the alien invasive plant, Amorpha fruticosa. It's been in Romania for a number of decades. It was imported to stabilize construction banks and railway lines, and it spread quite dramatically through the Mures watershed. It's a very fast-growing invasive species and it reduces biodiversity quite considerably. This type of habitat is highly impermeable to large carnivores like bears, but also other species such as wolves and lynx. And it's a potential barrier that is combined with a national road, an upgraded railway line as well. And large carnivores will just turn away and try and find an easier way to cross that may take them closer to communities as well that are less used to coexisting or living alongside these large carnivores nowadays. So a lot of the work we do can be framed within the terms of facilitating coexistence between people and wildlife, specifically large carnivores, and that's what we're trying to do here. We're maintaining the ecological connectivity of the landscape by facilitating coexistence, and a key part of that is maintaining the permeability of habitats. And a significant amount of our work is actually removing this alien invasive species from the landscape and then continually cutting it so it doesn't regrow. The organization has brought several plots of land in the area in order to adapt the layout. Members of Fauna and Flora International, but also locals paid for their involvement, work together on clearing and planting new native trees. This is another way to involve them in the conservation of their territory. Look at this big root. If we don't get rid of these false indigo plants around the saplings, it'll end up growing more quickly. It will suffocate the tree with its shade, below ground, and on the surface as well. Let's hope the saplings grow faster than the false indigo. Amorpha. Once the false indigo has been cleared, species endemic to the region are planted, including alder, willow, and poplar. 
Sperăm că spre... I hope it'll become a prince next year. Rebuilding parallel corridors through clearing false indigo and replanting is directly beneficial to wild animals, but also to local communities who use some plots as farmland. Such human interventions aid the free movement of bears and many other species. In the middle of the corridor, the village of Rosia Nua is an example of the success of this coexistence between man and beast. Anka Barbu from the Zorand organization wants to create and promote social links at the heart of this community. The idea is not to alienate local populations, but to involve them as much as possible. I've been working here for eight years and I've learned to love and integrate myself into this community. Wild animals frequently pass through the Petrish district. It's a very well-identified corridor with many signs of passage. We soon asked ourselves why they picked this place. Why use this sector to go from one side to the other? Studying the region and its villages, we realized that there was a very strong bond between man and nature. People work the land in a traditional way. They know there are wild animals here, and they accept them. And of course, they preserve their culture and old traditions. Hello, how are you? Long time no see. I'm glad you came. How are you? Fine. Busy doing jobs in the village, the kitchen, the garden, and so on. Throughout the project, we've tried to focus on the needs of local communities. Here, we've helped the village by putting up electric fences to protect crops from wild boar and roe deer. Whoa. So the electric fence helps you protect your crops? Yes, it's been very useful, both for me and other villagers. Because, at one point, wild animals, especially wild boar, would come and destroy our fields of corn, potatoes, and even the vegetables. How did you protect your crops before the fence was here? People had to work harder. They worked in the fields by day, and in the evenings, when it was dark, people who had crops would go to fetch their guard dogs. It was no life. It was very hard. Sometimes, if you were lucky, the animals wouldn't come. You could sleep a little. But if they came two or three times a night, well, it was like being in the army. As soon as you slept for an hour or two, the wild boars would come and wake you up. They caused a lot of problems. The project isn't limited to our region. It included the neighboring villages, and thanks to this project, we can live in peace. And the bears don't come to steal your honey? <laughs> Not anymore. The installation of electrified fences does not mean that the Zorand Association in any way intends to provide extra barriers to the bear's journey. It simply seeks to protect the inhabitants of the corridor's crops, while remaining respectful of the local fauna and its natural habitat.
Bineînțeles, nu își doresc să fie atacați de animale, nu doresc ca și culturile Clearly, people do not want to be attacked by these animals or for their fields to be pillaged. But thanks to the enclosures we have provided, they have started agreeing to this coexistence with the fauna. And they live in harmony with nature, as they did in the past. Everything in Rosianua is done so that the community can preserve its way of life and remain autonomous. The Zorand Association has suggested to some of the village's producers to pool their resources to act as a cooperative, making them less vulnerable economically. Between them, the villagers manage and share the production of honey, syrups and jams. This way, they can continue their activity while still respecting tradition and nature. It's important to support the community's durable development. We want to see people promoting their homemade produce. They are extraordinary products, and we want them to be appreciated elsewhere. We also want to help them realize the value of their traditional skills rather than lose them. The young generation no longer uses them and they risk being forgotten. But if they know how to profit from them, they will perpetuate them. Lotzie, a local beekeeper, is already reaping the benefits of the conservation efforts by Zorand, efforts that are directly linked to cohabitation with the large carnivores. Despite the reduction of bee populations on a national level, Lotzie's hives have been spared. The corridor's protection measures have allowed a flourishing of flowers and trees. Acacia trees are proliferating, and the honey has never been so good. I can barely hide my joy. I don't think I've seen this much honey since 2017 or 18. My approach to beekeeping is non-disruptive, non-invasive. I try to leave the hives alone. We try to live in harmony with nature. For me, wild animal visits are a delight. I took photographs of does and stags that came here to graze. But they left the hives alone. There was an incident with a predator once, a few years ago. A bear was moving around. It knocked over a few hives. But it didn't destroy them all. It ate from a few of them, and then it went on its way. I'm so happy to see these acacia trees in flower. The last two years, there were very few flowers because of the cold. I think this will be a good year for the bees. They will be able to choose their flowers. It is no legend that bears love honey. They usually eat the larvae-filled avioli of the hives, which provides them with a massive source of energy. Attracted by the night and the activity, these bear cubs are unable to resist these swarms that they find everywhere. Ever curious, they do not hesitate to leave their mother's side to follow their instinct and sense of smell, putting the whole family at risk. To help them learn to protect themselves and pick the right food, their mother will stay with them for two years. This female has lost weight while hibernating. 
To have enough milk to feed her cubs, she needs 20 kilos of food per day. She takes the corridor to an area she knows is rich in umbel and wild carrots. Her mischievous cubs slow her progress down. Having to call them back to her all the time, it may take her several weeks for her to cross the corridor with them. On this journey, the cubs discover the markers left by other bears and edible food in this waning period and start committing the ancestral pathways to memory. All information that will gradually build their experience. Radu Popa and Razvan are heading to the forest on the walkway equipped with camera traps to collect the memory cards and see if the bears have been through. In the last week, the slightest movement has triggered the cameras. 510, not bad. Let's get the card out and download it. Let's have a look. For these rangers and biologists who are enthusiasts, these images are fine proof of the success of the functionality project of the Zorand Corridor. Animals are successfully finding the paths devoted to them, allowing them to avoid barriers and other traps that could once bar their way. Look at him. He's beautiful. Thanks to the determined actions of all those involved in serving the local biodiversity, a new pact between humans and wildlife is gradually taking shape. I'm optimistic. The corridors, communities, and wild animals will live in harmony as long as traditional safety measures are maintained from one generation and to the next. Especially as there are now qualified people who can manage them. While the bears' ancestral paths have altered, they still allow young bears to find their territory, the older ones to mate, and the females to find food all year round. While the landscapes are connected, these vital movements through the Romanian Carpathians will be assured, and the existence of these new style paths will be transmitted from one brown bear generation to the next.